so. So there's a revolution, and it's the do it with me revolution, which is democratizing business. So if you're like me, you took some time off, hey, it's back to school time. Uh, maybe you have kids like I do. We spent some time in Central Oregon, riding horses, swimming in lakes, doing stuff you don't always do in San Francisco. And somebody else up in Oregon pumped my gas by law. See, Oregon still has do-it-for-me gas stations. Who remembers those? For everyone who doesn't live in Oregon, remember when every gas station was full service? Well, I do. You see, my dad owned a gas station, and I literally grew up uh, at, at one or two of those places. And I remember exactly when we stopped expecting someone else to pump our gas, and we started doing it ourselves to save money. Now it's just natural. We don't expect anyone to do everything for us anymore, do we? But what did we lose when we went DIY? Well, in addition to having to get out of the car in the cold or the heat and expose ourselves to the elements, we lost the routine diagnostics, you know, check the oil, check the tire pressure, all that good stuff. Then technology caught up. Cars got smarter, all our cars have computers in them now, they keep track of all that stuff for us. That lets us skip the middleman at the pump and go straight to the service department when something's wrong, whenever that service engine light comes on. So, beyond a do-it-yourself world, or even a do-it-for-me world, technology can create do-it-with-me experiences where consumers share in the process. Now, they might not do every step, but they can ultimately execute most parts of the process, making the whole thing better. This is democracy. It's when the consumers are involved in the delivery of the service, and it's democratizing business. So how does Do It With Me work in some other areas? How about education? Well, most of us grew up in a Do It For Me education system. Kids are shipped off to professional teachers, and most uh, learning happened through mentoring and apprenticeships before that. So it's kind of back to the future for Girls Who Code, which is a New York-based program to teach coding skills to young women. It's a do-it-with-me collaboration involving high-touch mentorship led by the computer industry's top female developers. And I love it. Who better to teach girls to code than the women who do it themselves? How about medicine? The FDA has just approved a digital pill. It's a pill with a little chip in it. You take it, it's powered by stomach acid once it's inside your body. Then it actually transmits out to doctors uh, and, and, and your family the basic stuff that's going on inside. Now that's do it with me medicine. Helps you to remember to take your, your meds when you need to. Lots more data and lots more participation by the patient. Now of course my favorite subject is law. A little bit about lawyers. As of 2007, there was one lawyer in the U.S. for every 272 people. In 1980, that was one lawyer for every 419 people. You see the trend going here. In 1880, with about 60,000 lawyers and a population of 50 million, there was one lawyer for every 836 people. But with so many lawyers per capita today, and so many people in need of legal services in our society, why does law cost so much and so many go without access to it? Now, supply and demand says it should be cheaper. Everybody knows there are a lot of lawyers out there. According to supply and demand principles, when price increases, demand usually decreases. There's less demand for $500 blue jeans than $50 blue jeans, except maybe in LA. <laughs> With legal services like medicine, however, Demand doesn't always fall in the face of higher prices. Consumption does. We're seeing that in the healthcare debate. The result is that legal services are under-consumed by the people who need them. And what does that mean for society? It brings me to this tweet that they asked us to make for, the, for TED today. It's hard to get these concepts into 140 characters, and I think that's some of the genius of, of Twitter, but we tried. So anyway, here's what we came up with. Capitalism is the failure and creative destruction, you've heard that term before, I'm sure, that spawn invention, reinvent the legal system for risk takers, 
and capitalism thrives. Why am I talking about risk takers? What I'm trying to say is that our legal system is a big reason why people can try and fail and start fresh. The legal system supports capitalism by regulating and mitigating risk with protections like incorporation and bankruptcy. When law isn't accessible, neither is prosperity. So here's our suggestion. The rise of do-it-with-me business models that have already gone everywhere, as we've seen from gas stations to education to medicine, need to be applied to the practice of law. With do-it-with-me, we started Rocket Lawyer as a do-it-with-me service to meet the demand for legal help by making consumption simpler and more affordable. With Do It With Me, we started changing the traditional relationship between the client and the lawyer. Lawyers are still really involved, they just have to work differently. Changing the knowledge and power balance is what democracy is all about, of course. That's why we call it a revolution. We're putting knowledge into more digestible chunks, into the hands of people, and with that, they can share in the legal process. The do-it-yourself part brings the cost down and empowers consumers and business owners. And in fact, more than 150,000 legal documents are created every month for free as a result of it. Now, the do-it-for-me part, well, that ensures that more complex matters can be professionally managed at a fraction of the cost. But do-it-with-me is really where it's all about. That allows us to collaborate with each other in a structured and efficient and, lo and low-cost way and you really need the structure, because of course we can't do what we don't understand. So you need the structure in order to bring the two together. The information and the expertise. Lawyers have traditionally been do it for me. They get paid a lot and usually charged by the hour as we all know. And because everyone needs legal services and advice, every startup, every small business, everybody in here, there are a lot of expensive hours billed every day, but what does a lawyer typically do at the beginning? They take a lot of basic information, and then they apply the expertise. Computers can do that. In fact, computers can take more information and apply more expertise. Like I said, at Rocket Lawyer, about 150,000 of these docs a month. How many individual lawyers are going to see 150,000 documents a month? Zero. A computer can then apply all that data and all that learning in an iterative way to eliminate stuff that doesn't make sense, and not to eliminate the lawyer, but to deliver to the lawyer a more efficiently organized project. Now we can go back to those original numbers and try to figure out that supply and demand problem. While in, 19, while in 1880 there was one lawyer for every 836 people, and in 2007 there was one for every 272, that's not enough, because we live in a much more complicated society. With many more businesses, the demand for legal services has outpaced the ability of lawyers to do everything for us at a price that makes sense. It's deceiving to look at demand based only on population. That's the same as looking at demand for energy only in terms of population. Population of China is 1.3 billion, but the per capita, per capita consumption of oil is only 1,600 kilograms a year. America, on the other hand, has a population of about 311 million, more than a billion fewer, and yet per capita consumption of oil is 7,200 kilograms per year. You can hiss if you want. <laughs> That's three times as much. China consumes a fraction of the energy consumed by our lifestyle. By the same token, in our society, in a, in, in a modern society, it's only natural that each person needs to consume more legal services. And the only way to meet that demand is do it with me. So let's find opportunities to apply the do it with me model, a model where in its simplest form the consumer and the service takes the consumer of the service takes on some of the burden for delivery. And ultimately, that's a force multiplier. With do it with me, even as transaction volume grows, every lawyer can handle more cases. One gas station attendant can serve as many cars now as it used to take five or six people. We train more girls to code by actually involving coders like them to teach them. I challenge you to go out and look at your own businesses and your own community and find opportunities to leverage the power of do it with me for everybody. Thanks.